Hi, I'm Kathy Saxton from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, and you may have seen there was a previous video when I was starting to do um, the Tula Bloomers um, pattern. It's an English paper piecing pattern, and I was using some of Anna Maria Horner's fabrics that had come in, and I was really excited because when I looked at them, I just saw English paper piecing and I saw all the ways it could fit together. And so some of you had asked for an update on how that process is going. So that's what I have here because, you know, English paper piecing is not quilt in a day. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. So I'll show you kind of where I'm at in the process. So you can journey along with me. This is a wonderful pattern. I, I actually did two Lenova first and I kind of wish I'd have done this one first because I feel like it gave me some really good basics um, for a beginner person. If you were still wanting to start, I would say start with this rather than Tula Nova. Um, Tula Nova is lovely, don't get me wrong, and it was fine, but typical to me, I see something I'm like, oh, I want to do that, and I jump in feet first and don't realize that that's probably the deep end of the pool instead of the shallow end of the pool. And you know, you got to learn to swim before you can jump in the water, theoretically, anyway. So, okay, so here's where I am. So, um, the way this pattern works is um, the diagram, I'm looking for my diagrams. Okay, so here you go. So when you make the pattern, it tells you like which pieces to make and how many of them to make. So when you get done, then you put all these pieces in here. So I have to make five blocks like this that each kind of are in their own colorway. Um, and then it'll do this color wash when I start putting things together. So, so far I'm making my five and I'm, I'm putting the orange around this. And what I'm learning in the process of doing this is how important my colors are that are my background colors. And I think that's true when you make regular quilts that you sew together and piece together. It's always the background that makes the actual block pop. So this is the actual block, we'll call it. And then these colors are your background pieces. What's fun about this pattern is the background has its own design. So now I have another color wash going on in the background in addition to the actual blocks. So each time I create a block, I have an opportunity really to design almost a mini quilt within the quilt. And so when you look at this block, I had to start with this in the center and then pick my pieces to go all the way out that kind of blend and go out. And then this one, although it's a very different colorway, because the shape is similar, when we put these in the quilt, they're gonna be fun and how it's gonna gradient through the colors. But you see, this is primarily pinks with just a little bit of aqua. And then this one here picks up the greens, but it pulls in the pink. So when these end up next to each other, they're gonna play off of each other. Same goes here, there's a little pink there's also that repeating green, and then here's the blue that I pick up here, and it's also over here, it's in here. So I went through these fabrics and had a blast working with um, the Anna Maria fabrics, but then we got some fabric in because when you work in a fabric store, you get fabric all the time. And I started, and I got this piece of fabric in, and I was like, <gasps> I see English paper piecing. It's kind of like, you know, once you do some English paper piecing, from that point on, every piece of fabric you look at, you're like, oh, but if I cut that up into 14,000 little pieces and put it back together, it would be so cool. So I got this piece of fabric and I thought, now wait a minute, do I have to stay in one fabric line to make all of these blocks? I don't, it's my quilt. I do whatever I want. It's not a shop sample, so I don't have to follow the rules. I can make this, this is for me, this is my enjoyment. So this fabric came in and I thought, well, I have to make some blocks out of that. Well, okay, so then, because it's a fabric store, we got some more fabric in. And again, I looked at these and I saw English paper piecing. See that little trumpet right there? I promise you that little trumpet that repeats is gonna show up in something that I do. There it is again, see that piece? So here's, here's the part that's hard for me now. I can't look at a piece of fabric, but what I start cutting it up into teeny, teeny, tiny pieces for English paper piecing. See this white daisy? That's gonna be in one of those blocks. I promise you it's gonna be in one of those blocks. Um, but now, and see there's the repeat. Look how many of those I'm gonna get. 
that's the other thing. When I'm in a big piece of fabric that's a large print, you don't get as many repeats. So like this piece right here, this great big piece, that doesn't repeat enough in a piece of fabric that when I had to have, I think, half a yard to get enough of those to do all six of these pieces. So like this one here, here's another example. See how that big poppy is in the center of that? It's lovely, but it took almost a half a yard to get that because the repeat of that particular part within the piece of fabric was very far spaced. So now I'm learning as I go, so I'm thinking, you know, more of pieces, and this is just that same piece again in a different colorway. But I'm looking now for pieces that repeat on a little shorter scale. So there's a trumpet. Oh, I'm looking at it upside down. Let's put it up here. Hey, that's what this for, this wall's for, right? Okay, so there's a trumpet, 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 there's a trumpet. There's a, see, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trumpets out of this piece where when I was cutting these bigger flowers, I had to have a half a yard. So, you know, typically an English paper piece, you're not cutting pieces this big, but for this pattern, I have to have some bigger pieces. But I also need littler pieces. So look at this, again, I'm looking at this piece of fabric and all I can see is cutting it up into teeny tiny little pieces because of the swirls and things in it. The way this is gonna lay, like this little piece right there, I can see that repeating and here it is. It repeats there and there and there and there and there, there, here. So I'm gonna put that in a piece, I feel sure. But then, when you look at these, you've got to have these other little pieces that go in here that kind of tie it together. And that's how I start auditioning other pieces. And that's where I need like lines like this. I got a feeling this is going here. Like this one, see how these lines, when I laid them out, they made another fan pattern, but that was just basically a little stripe that when I put it in there, it gave me that outline that I just, I think that's awesome. I love this one too. This piece from here to here is one piece, but this little wiggle here gives me an outline there. So that's another part to think about. So I've got these pieces because this swirl just caught my attention in a piece of fabric. I was like, oh, gotta have that swirl on one of these blocks. So when I'm making these blocks for bloomers, I start with what I would call the flower petal, this outside part. Um, that's where I get my inspiration. And then I kind of work from there because this is the one I'm gonna have to replicate the most times. I'm gonna have to have six pieces of this. So now I've got to audition what's gonna go in the center, which I'm thinking, again, I can repeat that stripe thing. If I can put these little triangles in here as these stripes, that's gonna draw attention to that. And then the other thing I have to think about because of the way this is made, is which solid am I gonna use? So I've already used aqua, I've used green, I've used pink, I've used orange. So it kind of gives me an option at this point to use lavender would be my best choice. And that's part of the reason I picked this particular one because I got a feeling in my little free spirit bundle of fat quarters, which we happen to have some of these. It's every color that Free Spirit makes in a wonderful Tula Pink Solids fat quarter bundle. So I'm going to pull from here and I'm going to work with these colors. I've already used the orange and the pinks. I've already kind of used the blue. Probably won't use these. I'm going to be somewhere in these two, I'm going to guess. So I can eliminate what I've already got. And now I've got to audition and figure out what color. I'm going to bet you I end up going this way. I kind of like that. It's a little too purple. I may pick another one too. Because I've got all these pieces of fabric I just can't help and be in. Ooh, look at that. That may be where I play. So remember when you were a kid and you got that box of 64 Crayola crayons and you got all the colors out and you read the names and colored with each one to see the different colors. I feel like I'm doing that with fabric in a way that I never did when I was just doing regular piecing with a quilt. The English paper piecing takes that whole color concept to a new level. So I'm seeing a minty on camera. Really? 
Mm -hmm. Like a minty aqua. A light, light minty aqua. this way pulling out yeah. that pulling out that fern leaf this one yeah but that's just because i'm behind the camera and i can well, see well and the camera shows the things different <laughs> Sh camera shows things different i don't know i may have caught myself and i do this sometimes i'll go oh that would make a perfect petal and it may take me a little bit of time to find the color to go with that and then you got that berry pink too i do have that berry pink well See, this is the part that's fun. Yeah, that's the part that's super fun, is just getting to look no, at all the options. But see, I've already used that color, so I have yeah. to pick another color. So I may start, you know what that makes me think, I may start at the <laughs> other end of the horse on this one. And because I have the orange and the pink and the green and the blue, I may need to add this lavender shade. Ooh, that's nice. Isn't that nice against those color tones? Uh -huh. So I may have to, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to buy more fabric. Wouldn't that be horrible to have to buy more fabric? Well, we get new fabric every day. We do. And you know who orders <laughs> most of it? You. Me. Um, You'll have to go through your invoices to see what's coming. I know, to see what's coming. <laughs> I can tell you. I know all the way till 2022 what we're getting. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out what, what to put with this. I think that's my color. Don't you? Yeah. I think that's my next color. Well, purple is my favorite color. I know. Purple is Peter's favorite color. And since he's back with us, he was gone for a little while, and he's... He's back on the mend. So, yeah, I think my next color in there is going to have to be purple. I think we've made that decision. That's a pretty shade, too. That's a nice shade. So now I just have to find what the petals are going to be. And I'll use this one in another one. It may be that this is going to have to go in these pinks. Ooh, that ain't bad. That might work in the pinks. Mm. I don't like it in the green. Now, let me oh, back up. Orange. Your background colors, Ooh, that's good. do you have to do five units with the same background color? Is that what I understood? Or did I misunderstand? No, you don't, not the same background color, the same. Um, the picture's really deceiving, the pattern. It shows make five blocks. But then when I see where those five blocks are positioned, they're in diff They're all five in a different colorway. Uh, so this, this pattern's a little confusing because... Seeing where the blocks blend, like when you look at this picture up here, this will show you exactly what we're talking about. So like this block here, see this block right here, okay, with the stars. is all surrounded by green. Uh huh. But he really butts up to this one, who when he's surrounded by blue, yellow, and green. So this is a transitional block, okay? So you make five that are all colored around the same. Oh, that's then, a half. Yes. That's got one, two, three, four stars. Right. The transition. I right. see. I see. I see. So there'll be one that comes into this. Now, I, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. So it'll it's going to depend on how these butt together. So I'm going to have some blocks that won't have all five stars around them. They'll just have, you know, just stars on this side, and the stars on that side will be another color because that's where the colors transition. Yes. But I have to start with five, one in each color, and then I have to figure out how to transition them. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I do like that against pink though. That against pink isn't bad. And I have to do more of this block with other colors around it, so I may do that this will be partially pink, and the other half of this block will have the purple on the other side to move from one color to the next. So. I don't know if those will stick because they've got the papers in them still, but they do kind of stick to that board. Okay, so that's 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 where I'm at in this process for those of you who were curious about where we are. We're doing a staff stitch in tonight, so this is what I brought to work on. Um, I will tell you, this is my new favorite toy, and it's just that plain old simple beeswax that we've used forever. But I really have found conditioning my thread is super, super important. Um, as well as being sure you take the thread off the top of the spool. So here's my 80 weight thread, and when this is the top of the thread, and I always make sure this goes through my needle so that when I'm sewing, that's the top of my thread. So this is gonna turn down in the needle like that, and that's gonna leave this piece continually going through my fabric with the right side up. So if you have questions about that, you can contact me, I'll tell you more about it, but um, the direction of the thread's huge. Your thread makes a big difference. Um, 
So that's my big trick. And then I'm still using my, um, just talking about tools. I still love my little magnets. If you don't have these magnets, you need to get some. I think they could hold a Mack truck from crossing the road because they're so stinking strong. They're really strong, but you need magnets to hold your pieces together. So you can see right here, I'm getting ready to sew this one on here. So there's my magnet holding it in place. See, it's on the back of the front. And the other thing is, is it makes a nice little pin key. So if it's oh, magnetic, it it'll hold my pin. Look at that. Yeah, I figured that out. It's like, wait, I'm gonna lose, oh no, I just keep it right there. So now I'm just ready to pick up right where I need to go next. That's a great idea. That's a huge, huge help. And did, then, I, did I see a handmade, hand beaded keep, uh, scissor <laughs> yeah. fob in there earlier? Yeah, you did, but I don't know where it's at now. Oh, shoot. It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. There's my oh key my fob. Gosh. It's all about the craft, isn't it? There you go. Can you see my key hand fob? Hand beaded, folks. Yeah, that's peyote beading. It's kind of fun. We have these in the store, too. You can buy these. Love isn't that, that. fun? That's it's all about the tool. If you're gonna do it, you wanna have fun <laughs> stuff. I need a really cool box instead of just a tub, like a Tupperware bag to carry yeah. it. Um, and then as far as needles go, um, I'm, I'm all about using the size nine straw needle. I do still like that needle a lot. Um, that's the best. And then the other thing that I just wouldn't do this without is this little button, and we sell these. I can put it right here on my finger. Oh, whoop. got it. It just sticks right here because when I put a thimble on, I tend to not use that finger, but this is my pushing finger and I can stick that on there and it just sticks. Very cool. And I love this for my thimble. It's the first time I've ever had a thimble that I use as a thimble and not a don't touch that finger thing. Right, so you. that is it. You got questions? Call me. You can stop by the shop, too. We'd love to see you. Um, we're www.alwaysinstitches1.com. We do have this pattern with the templates, which I would highly recommend buying the template set. Um, and I think I talked about cutting and stuff before, but you don't want to try and do it without these templates that give you all these shapes. And we got the light boxes back and in stock. And we have the light boxes back in stock, which are amazing when you're trying to find these shapes. So I've got another video about the light box. You can watch the light box video on YouTube. Look for it. Um, and then, of course, the paper templates. These come already cut out and made for you as part of the pattern. And, you know, somebody said, oh, you can cut your own. Well, I'm just going to tell you, for what these cost, I am not cutting the gazillions. <laughs> look, at, look at all these little pieces you'd have to cut. I'm not doing it. Um, these come perforated so let me move my fabric so he didn't step on it come on over here I want to show you how these work because this is kind of cool so <clears throat> let's start with this one so when you look at this piece right here I'm going to outline it here 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 that is one piece <clears throat> one piece that I cut out from one piece of fabric now it looks like more than one because of the way it worked so here's my template for it right there see that piece that's what she looks like. But in the next block, what I did was... Oh my gosh, I tore those little triangles. <laughs> this little triangle. <laughs> I tore that little triangle off, and I made this piece. Yikes. And then this piece is basically just a hexagon. So I put a small hexagon in the middle. And I actually made two half hexes to fit there. So I get this piece in that kit that I can change up the way this star goes together lots of different ways. So that one was made with tearing the tip off, making hexy, hexy, actually made half hexies because this has to be a cross here. You couldn't really do a whole hexy and make it work. Well, you could, but the way my fabric was printed, I wanted the fabric to do this, so I had to make two half hexies because it's mine. I can do what I want. Then this one, okay, this one I even changed it up more. So I made a whole big hexy in the middle, and I just cut toward this piece off and just used this tip. So now that's one big hexi, the same as these size hexies. And in this one, I made one piece for each. So there's a tiny triangle there, this is one piece, and this is one piece. Wow. So you get this piece, this, this template, in the kit of the pattern, and it gives you lots of different ways to lay this little piece out right here. So that one I just took the bottom piece off and made one big hexi, this one, I did every single one of those pieces a different piece of fabric. This one 
it's all one. And I'm guessing you have the coordinating plastic templates yes. to cut around. And so you yes. just use that paper to, to then fold your fabric that right. you cut around. Yeah, this it. is just so. my paper. This is I just my so. paper. The templates are in the little box. So you get your templates. Actually, I think I just lied to you. I think I had to make, so it has there's the little triangle, little, little triangle, the, and then this piece is both piece. Yep. So there's, you can make that separately. Very cool. Where it got a little wrong to do was when I wanted to make it whole, uh -huh. then I have to use this one. Oh, okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. So this, these three templates will give me all the ways this will come together. Well, that's slick. It is pretty slick. So that's why you want the templates. It's like a choose your own mystery. Well, it is kind of choose your own mystery, and it's kind of choose your own block. It, it's given me so many choices, and this is why I'm looking at this little piece of flat. Look at this little, okay, I can just see this. A little triangle. I see a triangle. Do you see the little triangle? I do. I okay. see the little triangle. Well, two to do this on this. Okay, look at this little. I just saw it, and I lost it. Right here. Look at that little piece in that triangle. She'll probably go that way. Can you see her? I don't have a light box behind her, but it's going to be this piece right here. Yes, yep. That's going to be a triangle. I can just see it happening. That's too small. See, that's why the templates help. So see, this this is too small. I would only get just the very center, which might be okay. I may just want that part, but that whole piece is so pretty. Yeah. I probably am going to do, that'll fit in a one inch pretty nice. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Won't that be cute in there? Perfect. That'll be perfect in that. So that's why you want the templates. They audition. And when you have the light box behind it, that's why the light box really helps. It really gives you that you can see things through better. So... Okay, I'm sure we've gone longer than we should have, but I just wanted you to see where we're at with this. Please call me. Um, I'm Cappy at Always in Stitches, 317-776-4227. Our website's www.alwaysinstitches1.com. And we just love to work with you. Come see us. Happy stitching.